Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking with you about how I overpainted this massive um, painting from Ikea, a print from Ikea, a, pho a photograph from Ikea that we'd had in our lounge for a long, long time. And I just was a little tired of it. And I overpainted it with acrylic paints. Now, as a hobby artist, this is probably my fifth acrylic work I've ever done. And I just started it because I wanted to change something. This this picture was dominant in my lounge. So first of all, I took these, I took it off the wall and I, I put some masking tape around the edges just to try and save the silver frame because I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work. And you can see here that the actual image is very dark. So to start with, I only had white and yellow acrylic paint. So I thought, well, let me paint over the darkest parts first so that I can start to almost underpaint my, my next painting that I wanted to do. So this is what I did. I used quite a bit of the whites that I had and some yellow, but as you can see, it's really is still quite thin. Now, this paint was drying. I'd, I put the paint down the one day and let it dry, and then I would come back the next day and put on the next layers. But to start with, I, I actually ran out of paint. I didn't have enough. I just started this on a whim. Uh, finally, I went to the dollar store and bought some more ac acrylic paint in white, and I was able to put um, a, a deeper layer of white over this dark photograph so that I could bring it up because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to paint with it to start with. And at the dollar store, I cleaned them out and I bought all of these tiny little bottles. I think they're 50 milliliters of paint. It really isn't the best paint in the world, but I picked up um, their white and I picked up a red as well. And here I'm showing you once more, I put on now like this is almost like the third coat of white, trying to um, put it, put down a base color for the painting I plan to do. And really, I didn't know what I was doing, but I just knew that I wanted to put some of my expression on this canvas and get rid of the, the black and white London bus. I mean, we'd had it for seven years or something and I kind of had enough. So I continued on every day, layering more white down, trying to cover up this quite dominant black and my idea was that I was just although I didn't I'd kind of had enough of the painting I didn't want to get rid of the actual canvas and as a as a beginner artist hobby artist I thought well I might as well reuse it now as I continue to put layers of this paint on and you can see then it eventually dries the next morning it was seemed to be printed on some kind of hard cardboard and it slowly started to curl upwards so in, uh, by that point, I was very concerned about it. You can see that it's lifting slightly from the frame. I was concerned about over wetting it further. And I was then trying to put thinner, thinner layers on um, in one go. So then I started with this uh, deeper red color because I'd read somewhere that if you put red as an under color on a, on a, on a painting, under painting, it gives depth to the painting and what did I know? So I thought, well, let me put some swathes of this red across my painting and that's as far as the red paint went. So once more, I let this dry and um, I, I just started it like diagonally across because again, I didn't know where I was going, but I didn't have any more paint. So then continuing on, not quite sure what I was doing because I am a hobby artist and I'm really learning as I go. I continued putting down as much as I could. I finally went out and got some proper paint and I put a full coat of red across the whole of the canvas because I thought this is what they were saying um, on other YouTube videos and where I'd read on, on art uh, blogs and so on, that if you do have a deep red, it will give depth to your painting. So again, what did I know? So finally I got this red on here and again, that had to dry overnight. This, this is a long process. Next, I was following a YouTuber on, um, on acrylic painting and she was painting flower gardens, um, abstract flower gardens with dabs of colors and circles. So I thought, oh, let me do colors and circles, not realizing she was doing colors and uh, dabs and circles because she was doing abstract flowers. I just thought it was one way of adding color below underneath on the actual uh, canvas. So I did quite a bit of dabbing and coloring. And by this stage, I'd actually bought some more acrylic paints. So continuing on now, trying to sort of cover the red bottom layer that was on, I came along with 
an assortment of different colors that I had, yellows, blues, and some darker uh, reds and greens, started mixing some colors, because by this stage I had, I had more acrylic paint, and I started adding more abstract circles and dots, because that's what she had done, and I thought, well, let me try it, doing it this way. And I continued on, as you can see, and all of these colors had to dry overnight, and then I would pick up the blue the next morning, do the blue, then I'd pick up the yellow and do the yellow. So even though I'm actually covering quite a bit of the canvas, there is still quite a lot of that base red coming through. And in some places, there's still little bits of the white coming through. And as the days went on, I mixed different colors of my, my limited palette, what I had, and I continued adding dots and blobs and circles because I thought that's what I ought to do. Now, ultimately, we got to a point where I thought, well, this is quite a nice com uh, composition. I kind of liked the way the colours were working. It seemed to have a little bit more interest, but it was a little bit all over the place for me. And um, I took it off the table for a couple of days and just propped it up in my lounge to live with it. And I thought, well, I could probably live with this, but it really was distracting. There was nowhere really for your eye to settle. And uh, that's what made me decide to continue on. So got the painting back on the table, mixed up some more colours and continued adding more colors now i'm adding white on top and a little bit more yellows i'm mixing up some peaches and the paint is going on quite thick so i was ending up with having raised areas and um, thicker areas and um, which i kind of quite like but i still wasn't really quite sure where i was going with this but in the end i had this multi-colored blobby painting yes we could say it's an abstract but it really was uh um, as I said, there was no way for the eye to rest. It, it tended to be very busy. And um, so I thought, no, I, I can't live with this in my lounge. This is just way too much. As I continued adding more dots and dots and dots and circles and what have you. Because as I said, as a hobby artist, I didn't really know where I was going. It then occurred to me that I could do perhaps a seascape because I live near, this, near the coast. And uh, that's where I thought, well, I'll do an abstract seascape. And that's where I started with next. So I've got this painting now in three horizontal areas. We've got the sky at the top, the sea is in the middle section, and then the beach is at the bottom. So I started bringing in different colors that were related to sky, sea, and beach. And um, again, over several days, I laid down more colors, laid down more blobs. Um, in this point, I almost had a boat on the horizon, but uh, that disappears um, eventually. But I was finally getting something that I felt I could live with rather that could live on my uh, lounge wall rather than a, a big painting and at the same time I had two 12 inch squares which I thought hey I could do other ones here too and just make mini versions of the big one which is what I did so I started working on those two and then you can see as over time um, the big ship disappeared I've added more waves I think uh, more breakers I added more uh, depth to the actual beach um, I feel that the painting now is drawing your eye in rather um, than the, the chaos of the circles. Now this is the finished painting. It's it's hanging on my wall. Um, I was quite pleased with it. I of course removed the masking tape and I did sign it. I added a little bit more uh, color with Posca paints, a little bit more dots and what have you and signed it. And so it went from this, this black, white and red London bus city scene to the, what I'm calling my English beach. That's a place in Vancouver, my acrylic seascape. and. That's what I was doing over the last few weeks. I just wanted to share that with you.